Hi folks, let's take some time to go over a couple more angled projectile problems. To begin with, we'll take the case of a ball that is thrown at an angle so that its horizontal velocity is 10 meters per second and its vertical velocity is 12 meters per second. It takes 1.22 seconds for the ball to reach its highest point. What is the launch speed of the ball? Well, to do this, let's first figure out the components in the x direction we have 10 meters per second. In the y direction, vertically, we have 12 meters per second. So the launch speed is the resultant of these two vectors, which we get by going from the starting point of the first vector to the ending point of the last vector when they're lined up tip to tail. Now to figure out the magnitude of that green vector, our resultant, all we have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals hypotenuse squared. So in this case, our total velocity, v, is going to be the square root of 10 meters per second squared plus 12 meters per second squared, or 15.6 meters per second. Now in part b, it says, what horizontal distance does the ball travel during its entire time in the air? Well, to do this, let's first make a diagram and realize the ball's going to go up and come back down. Now we know it takes 1.22 seconds to reach its highest point. Therefore, the total time in the air must be 2 times that, or 2.44 seconds. And the velocity in the x direction we already found from the previous problem was 10 meters per second. So since there's no acceleration in the x direction, we can use the formula average velocity equals distance over time, or distance, displacement, is average velocity times time, or 10 meters per second, times 2.44 seconds. When I do that, I get a displacement of 24.4 meters. Good. Let's go on and take a look at another problem. In this problem, we have a quarterback throwing a football downfield at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. The ball lands 30 meters downfield, 1.5 seconds after it was thrown. What's the horizontal component of its velocity? Well, to find the horizontal component of its velocity, let's again start with the diagram. There's the path of the football. It had a horizontal displacement of 30 meters, and it did this in a time of 1.5 seconds. So the horizontal component of its velocity Average velocity in the x direction must be displacement over time, or 30 meters over 1.5 seconds, which is 20 meters per second. Now we're asked to find the initial launch speed of the football. Well, if we go back to our vector diagrams again, we know in the x direction it was traveling 20 meters per second, and we also know that it was launched at an angle of 20 degrees. We can use our trig to find the initial launch speed, the hypotenuse in this case. Since the ang well, when we use our trig, what we're going to find is that the x component is going to be the initial velocity vi there times the cosine of our angle theta. We already know vi x, we know theta, we want vi, the total initial velocity, therefore vi equals vi x divided by the cosine of theta, or 20 meters per second, over the cosine of 20 degrees, which is 21.3 meters per second. Hey, looks like we're on a roll. Let's try two more. Maybe make them a little bit more involved. A golf ball leaves a golf club with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second and an angle of 50 degrees with the horizontal. What is the vertical component of the golf ball's initial velocity? Well, we have our golf ball with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. Its angle with the horizontal is 50 degrees. What is the vertical component? We can use our trig again. In this case, we'll use the sine function as we make a right triangle because we want this opposite side, viy. So the sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse 
Therefore, since we're looking for the opposite, which is VIY, VIY is going to be equal to VI sine 50 degrees, or 30 meters per second, times the sine of 50 degrees, which is 23 meters per second. So now we're asked to find the total flight time of the ball. Okay, well, our ball is going to go up and down in flight time. That implies that we're looking at the vertical motion of the ball. And once again, we realize that if it goes up and down and returns to the same level, that we can split that in half and look at half the time with a little bit easier math. So vertically, let's make our table. V initial, V final, displacement, acceleration, and time. The initial velocity vertically we just found was 23 meters per second, and at its highest point right there, vertically, it stops for a split second. So final velocity is zero. We'll call up the positive direction, therefore acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared, since the acceleration due to gravity is down, and we're looking for time. We can use our kinematic equation, VF equals VI plus AT, or rearrange that to say T equals VF minus VI over A. Now when we substitute in with units, T equals 0 minus 23 meters per second over negative 9.81 meters per second squared for a time of about 2.34 seconds. Now we have to realize that this is the time to get to its highest point. We want the total flight time of the ball, so if it takes 2.34 seconds to go up, it must take 2.34 seconds to come down, or the total time in the air is 2 times 2.34 seconds, or 4.68 seconds in the air. Finally, what horizontal distance did the golf ball travel? Well, if we want to find that, now we're looking at a horizontal problem, it'd be helpful to know the horizontal component of its initial velocity. We can find that the same way. The initial velocity in the x direction is just going to be the initial velocity times the cosine of our angle, or 30 meters per second, times the cosine of 50 degrees, which comes out to be around 19.3 meters per second. Now horizontally, v average equals d over t. We want d, our displacement, which is v average times t, or 19.3 meters per second times our total time, 4.68 seconds, because that's how long the ball is moving horizontally, which gives us a displacement of about 90.4 meters in the x direction. Looking good. One more. We have a lizard kicking a ball with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second, an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. Don't ask me why lizards are kicking balls, we're just solving the problem. What are the horizontal and vertical components of its velocity? Well, its initial velocity is 10 meters per second, and that's at an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. So we want its horizontal velocity, vi in the x direction, and its vertical velocity, vi in the y direction. And again we go back to our trigonometry. vi in the x direction is just going to be vi cos theta, or 10 meters per second, times the cosine of 35 degrees, which works out to be about 8.2 meters per second in the x direction. In the y direction, VIY is just going to be VI sine theta, or 10 meters per second, times the sine of 35 degrees, comes out to about 5.7 meters per second. So now we have the components of the initial velocity of the ball. We're asked to find the total time the ball's in the air. That sounds like a vertical problem. So realize the ball comes up and it's coming back down to the same level. Once again, let's cut this motion in half. So when we make our table of what we know vertically, VI vertically is 5.7 meters per second, 
Vf at its highest point is zero, we know acceleration is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Again, assuming we're calling up positive, we want T. Our kinematic equation, Vf equals Vi plus At, or T equals Vf minus Vi over A. That's zero minus 5.7 meters per second over negative 9.81 meters per second squared for a time on the way up of 0 0.58 seconds. So once again, the total time must be twice that, or about 1.16 seconds in the air. And finally, C, find the maximum height of the ball. Well, that's another vertical problem, only this time we're solving for displacement. We already know VI, VF, A, and T. We've got plenty of information. We can pick our favorite formula to solve here. Let's use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Therefore, D equals VF squared minus VI squared over 2A. VF at its highest point is 0 minus VI, 5.7 meters per second, squared over 2 times negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Very carefully plug that into my calculator, and I come out with a displacement of 1.66 meters, which must be the maximum height the ball reached. Thanks and good luck.